the interplay of uh, the different uh, branches of the government. So uh, under our constitution, there are three separate and distinct branches. So you have executive, legislative, and judicial. So as you can see on your screen, nandiyan yung mga offices or agencies under specific branch. So if you can notice, the biggest is the office of the president or the executive branch. Diba? The executive, napakarami yan eh. Whereas ang legislative, Congress lang yan, Senate and the House. And judicial, all the courts. So wala dito yung mga other agencies created by the Constitution, which we call constitutional commissions. So we'll have a separate discussion on that. Okay? And of course, alam nyo, dito mong gagaling sa ikong chapter 5 yan dyan eh. So, kumpahin natin yung separation of powers. If you look at the structure of our system, separation of power is a fundamental principle in our system of government. Why? Unlike in a parliamentary form of government, that there is no separation between the executive and legislative. Whereas in presidential form like ours, there is separation. Okay? So it uh, obtains not to express provision because if you look at the constitution itself, walang sinasabi na separation of powers talaga. But come to think of it, mayroon distinctions eh. You go to Article 6, you have uh, legislative. 7, executive. 8, judicial. So every department has its own uh, power within its sphere. Diba? Ayan. So, our governmental structure rests on the principle of separation of powers. And uh, under our constitutional order, the legislative branch enacts the law. Okay? The executive branch implements the law. And the judiciary construes or interprets the law. That's the uh, decision of the court. Written by Justice Leonen. Sikat siya ngayon kasi yung chairman ng bar exam, di ba? Sa Provincial Bus Operators Association of the Philippines. So, ito yung essence of our system. That's why the president cannot do anything that is not provided for by law. In the essence of saying police power. Of course, we will discuss that later on. So, sabi ng presidente, ipaaresto ang lahat ng walang uh, bakuna or ang galin sa posisyon sa gobyerno, walang bakuna. In the exercise of the police power of the state, we agree. But police power, remember, Mr. President, is lodged in the legislature. Diba? We'll discuss that later. So if the legislature did not create a law that would authorize the President to execute it, baseless yung invocation of police power. Get it? Ayan. So that is our system. Do not take my word for that. Huh? You take the word of the Supreme Court. So, separation of power is not expressly provided in the Constitution. But you can see it in the actual revisions of the Constitution. This uh, decision was as early as 1936. So sometimes uh, it may differ from the present Constitution as to the arrangement of the articles. No? But just the same, tingnan ninyo, Article 6, Legislative, Article 7, Executive, Article 8, Judicial. So, that's the case of Angara versus Electoral Commission, 1936 by Okay? It's not provided in the Constitution, but if you look at the constitutional structure, you'll find out that talagang there is a provision for separation of powers. Okay? Ngayon, the President is the head of the Executive Branch, a co-equal body of the Judiciary under the Constitution. The orders of the president ay dapat sundin. He has the prerogative with respect to the other branches of the government. Interbranch courtesy is but a consequence of the doctrine of separation of powers. So question, when the president says do not obey the order of the Senate, not to the police and the military, that's a blatant violation of the separation of powers. Why? That's encroachment. The president can never say that the police force, the military is mine because it's under the executive. No. 
Because under the Constitution, these are law enforcement agencies, particularly the police, that other branches of the government in the exercise of their powers may also give orders. Well, it's the president himself who said that magkikreate ng constitutional crisis. I agree. Because what if the police insist on not following the orders of the Senate? Can they be prevented by the president from obeying the orders of the Senate? Eco equal branch yan. Oh. Diba? So it's a crisis. A brewing. That's the case of KMU versus Benigno Aquino. If you read that case, that's uh, that has something to do with the increase in the SSS contribution. Okay? At question ito ng kilusang Mayo Uno. So, uh, if the powers are separated, para sa anyon, we also exercise check and balance. Okay? But it does not follow from the fact that the three powers are to be kept separate and distinct. The Constitution intended them to be absolutely unrestrained in an independent, uh, an independent of each other. Okay? Dapat yan end. The Constitution has provided for an elaborate system of checks and balances to secure coordination in the workings of the various departments. So they are not independent, although they have separate powers, they do not act independent of each other. Okay? There is check and balance. That's the case again of Angara versus Electoral Commission. Now, the Constitution has provided for an elaborate system of check and balance in the various departments of the government. So, for example, the chief executive under the Constitution, uh, is so far made a check on the legislative power. Paano yon? Through the so-called veto power. The president may deny the enactments of Congress. But another check on that, you know the system, di ba? It is returned to the House of Origin. But Congress may bypass with a vote of two-thirds of the members eh, the veto power of the president because the bill may become a law when Congress bypasses the veto power of the president. So that's another check. Kasi baka lahat na lang ibibito ng presidente. Okay? Now, this however is said, ayan, that the uh, the president may have vote of two-thirds. Ito yung sinasabi ko na unahan ko na palipaliwanag. Ano? Now, the president also has the right to convene the assembly or congress in a special session whenever he chooses. So, kung mga lakwatsador na mga congressman at senador, eh pwede pa tawag ng pangulo in a special session, even if congress is on recess. Eh? Kaya lang, dati-rati, yan po ay nagiging source ng uh, ano yon. A patronage system. Kasi pag aattend ka ng special session, na tawag ng Pangulo, syempre meron niyang carrot and stick, di ba? Kung ikaw maten, wala kang budget. Pag umaten ka, release yung pork barrel. <laughs> Although, you know, that case of uh, Imbong versus Ochoa, that pork barrel is no longer valid under the Constitution. Di ba? Okay. So, on the other hand, the National Assembly operates as a check to the executive in the sense that the appointments to uh, by, made by the executive are subject to the confirmation of the commission on disappointment. I mean, commission on appointments. Diba? Hindi unrestrained yung power ng presidente na mag-appoint. Because that power can be checked by the commission on appointments. Okay? Now, furthermore, in its power to determine what courts other than the Supreme Court shall be established to define your jurisdiction, etc., nasa power din ito ng uh, Congress. Okay? Although, ang nakalagay sa Constitution natin, hindi nila pwedeng i-increase or decrease ang jurisdiction of the court without uh, advice from the Supreme Court. Yan nakalagay sa Constitution natin. Maliwan again, ha? separation, check and balance. Now, what about delegation of power? Sa delegation, eh, it is a product of the growing complexity of modern life. Diba? Dati, simple lang ang buhay. The multiplication of the subjects of governmental regulation and the increased difficulty of administering the laws require the delegation of powers traditionally belonging to the legislative, to administrative agencies. 
A good example, dati rati, Department of Transportation and Communication. But the Department of Transportation and Communication may no longer be uh, capable of administering the communication part. That's why it necessitated Congress to create another agency which we now call Department of Information and Communication Technology. Right? So, in separate na ito from the uh, transportation. So, para makapag-focus ka sa communication, because communication nowadays, unlike before, na wide communication lang, at saka through television and radio, may internet ka na ngayon eh. May wireless communication ka na ngayon. May email ka na. Diba? So, our life has become complicated. Parang love life ng iba sa inyo. It's complicated. <laughs> okay. May hirap yung complicated na love life. Ha? Now, uh, the same case of uh, PIBOAP, no? Provincial Bus Operators Association. The legislative likewise may apportion competencies or jurisdiction to administrative agencies over certain conflicts involving special technical expertise. Katulad nga nung binabanggit ko sa inyo kaninang department. Okay? Now, as expressed in the Latin maxim, potestas delegata non delegare potest, which means what has been delegated cannot be delegated. So, how do you construe that? The power of Congress is already a delegated power by the people because under the Constitution, we are the sovereign people. So, since we cannot legislate, we delegated our power supposedly to legislate to Congress, the legislative branch. Therefore, if it's already delegated, Congress cannot delegate that anymore. Guess you? Okay. So this doctrine, according to that case of uh, Europe Customs versus Tevez, this doctrine is based on the ethical principle that such delegated power constitutes not only a right, but a duty to be performed by the delegate. So, i-delegate natin sa Kongreso, hindi pala nila kaya, i-delegate na naman nila. So, that's a general principle na the delegate can no longer delegate what has been delegated. Parang yung inutusan siya ng presidente, yung sekretary niya, yung sekretary pala may assistant, inutos sa assistant, inutos pa ulit sa assistant. Parang gawin nangyayari, no? <laughs> Although hindi naman ganyan talaga, merong cabinet secretary ilan ang kanyang undersecretary at ilan ang kanyang assistant secretary. Okay? Hmm. The principle of non-delegation of powers is usually applied to legislative power. Since legislative power of Congress is already delegated by the people, that's what I was saying. Di ba? Uh, the power of the, the government, particularly Congress, is delegated by the people. That's why Direct delegation, bakit? They are elected directly by the people. Remember, that's why in your election law, if you can still recall, Quinto versus Comelec. Nalala nyo pa yun? Interpreting Section 66 of the Omnibus Election Code. Ano nakalagay sa Omnibus Election Code Section 66? Kapag ka nag-file ng Certificate of Candidacy, ang isang elected official is not deemed resigned, not ipso facto resigned. But an appointed official, the moment he files his certificate of candidacy for any position, elected position, he is deemed resigned. So, it was questioned before the Supreme Court for alleged violation of equal protection clause and for being overbreath. Hindi bad breath, ha? overbreath. Ayan. So, in 2009, December 2009, there was a ruling penned by Justice Natura affirming the uh, unconstitutionality of Section 66 saying na ito ay unconstitutional kasi nga mayroong violation of equal protection. What differentiates an elected official from an appointed official in terms of filing certificate of candidacy, nauuso ngayon yan, di ba, nung pa-file sila, kasi pagka-elected ka, you are not deemed resigned. 
Maswerte pa nga yung senador, di ba? Yung senador, tatakbong vice president o president. Pag natalo, balik senado lang. Bakit? Hindi pa tapos yung term niya eh. Hmm. Pero yung appointed, let's say ikaw ay isang uh, director, uh, um, career official, di ba? O nag-file ka ng certificate of candidacy, then resign ka. Hindi ka na makakabalik dyan. So cut yung service mo. Kasi nag-resign ka eh. So ito is question. Sabi ni Justice Natura in 2009, That is unconstitutional and that is overbred. Sa dumal awa, okay? In a motion for reconsideration in 2010, Justice Puno, ah, the dissenter in the original decision, said there is no violation because there is substantial distinction between an appointed official and an elected one. Because the elected official receives the direct mandate of the people kasi siya yung pinili eh. Whereas the appointed one has indirect mandate. Okay? So you could just imagine as one of their examples there. A regional director of the police. Okay? In charge of maintenance of peace and order, particularly during election. He filed a certificate of candidacy, for example, as a governor of the province where he is assigned. Huh? He is not considered resigned. I am not saying that it is happening. I am not also saying that this is not happening. Assuming that we allow that uh, PNP regional director to file a certificate of candidacy for governor of the province, and yet he is not considered resigned from his position. Chances are, He might be utilizing the resources of his office, right, diba? in order to promote his candidacy. That's a very absurd situation. That's why, in the motion for reconsideration, and sabi ng Korte Suprema, there is substantial distinction, and it's not over. Uh, it's not very broad. Why? There is a specific purpose for that. There's a um, there is wisdom behind that law. So kung hindi tayo agree, it's not for the court to decide, but for Congress to create another law. Kaya sabi naman ng mga, mga petitioners, eh bakit to yung mga, hindi na, uh, not all appointed officials are uh, partisan, uh, included in partisan pol uh, political exercise. Tulad ng mga barangay, di ba? Hindi naman supposedly partisan yan. O, eh ang problema, magkakaroon tayo ng distinction among distinctions. So that would be very chaotic, disorderly situation. So kaya ang distinction, appointed at elected. So pagka-elected ka, you need not resign because you are not ipso facto uh, resigned from your post when you file a certificate of candidacy. So kaya yung mga local government officials, among elected, they could finish their term until June 30 following the election. But for those who are appointed and they're uh, filing their certificate of candidacy until uh, October 8, uh, I resigned na ho kayo. Maliwanag. So, uh, there are exceptions, however, to the rule that what has been delegated may no longer be delegated. One, people. Asa na exception na yan? Under Article 6, Section 1. Okay? Orange, yes, mga kaya mo din. Yari. Legislative power reserved to the people under Article 6, Section 1 through initiative and referendum. Then, emergency powers delegated to the executive under Article 6, Section 23, Paragraph 2 during state of war or national emergency. But of course, Congress will enact a law. The taxing powers under Section 28 of Article 6 Huh? that Congress may authorize the President to fix within speci specified limits and subject to limitations and restrictions as may, uh, it may impose, again, through a law. Okay? Um, impose tariff rates, import and export quota, tonnage and warfage dues, and other duties imposed within the framework of the National Development Program of the government, if there is such. And administrative agencies. Huh? 
Because when Congress creates an administrative agency, it is given not only a ministerial power, hindi ministerial ang power niya, kundi rule-making power. Diba? So meron siyang quasi-legislative quasi power and quasi-judicial power. So may certain delegated um, power given by Congress. Like for example, when the Labor Code was enacted, the Department of Labor and Employment was tasked to implement the law by crafting and implementing rule and regulation. And it is in the law itself, particularly Article 5, which says that um, the agency tasked to implement this may promulgate rules and regulation and the same shall be effective 15 days after its publication in a newspaper of general circulation. So there is a delegated power in order to implement the law itself by the agency created by this law. And you have the local government units. Under uh, the local government code, so may delegated power. That's why mayroong delegated uh, police power, power of eminent domain, and power of taxation ng mga local government units natin. And what is the basis of that, those delegated uh, powers? The local government code, which was enacted by Congress for pursuant to Article 10 of the Constitution. Okay? Maliwanag. So kaya kung titignan ninyo, ano ang acronym natin dito? PETAL. People, Executive, Taxing Power to the President, Administrative Agencies, and Local Governments. So parang bulaklak, isipin nyo lang yung bulaklak at maaalala nyo exception to the rule that what has been delegated may no longer be delegated. Now, if you are delegating an authority, there must be um, parameters. And in the 2016 bar, it was asked, explain the completeness test and sufficient standard test. So ano nga ba ang kaibahan? These are the tests for valid delegation of powers by Congress. So there are two tests to determine whether or not the delegation made by Congress is valid. One, I'm sure you're very familiar with this, the completeness test and the sufficient standards test. Okay? So in the case of KMU, again, KMU versus Aquino, Simply put, what are needed for a valid delegation are the completeness of the statute making the delegation and the presence of a sufficient standard. That's another way of saying completeness test and sufficient standard test. Right? Now, pag sinabi natin completeness test, alam nyo, uh, this is the beauty of uh, studying law. Kasi unless the old doctrine is reversed by the court in a new decision, you need not read the new decision. Ganyan sa JD. Sa PhD, hindi. Sa PhD, limang taon lang ang halaga mo. Di ba? Because if you use a reference older than five years, yung advisor mo at yung panel members hindi papayag. <laughs> for, for law students, there is certain degree of stability. Why? Stare decisis nan quiet tight buber. Do not disturb what has been settled because you need to stick to precedence. Well, so to determine completeness, all the terms and provisions of the law must leave nothing to the delegate except to implement. What is wrong when the law delegating certain powers is incomplete? It will be subject to the discretion of the implementor. And that will create a problem. Because the delegate should have no discretion because the law must be complete. You should no longer add to the law. Okay? And what can only be delegated is not the discretion to determine what the law shall be, but the discretion to determine how the law shall be enforced. So, hindi na kailangan i-interpret nila, kundi paano nila ipapatupad. Eh, sino ba din delegate dito? Either the 
uh, executive or the administrative body. Clear? So let us proceed to the sufficient standards test. In that same case of KMU versus Binigno Aquino, si Pinoy ito, no? again, ito yung pag-increase ng contribution sa SSS that was questioned by the Kilusang Mayo Uno. The sufficient standard test mandates that there should be adequate guidelines or limitations. In other words, a roadmap, boundaries of the delegate's authority and prevent delegation from running riot. Ibig sabihin, ay eh, pag wala kang mga standards, ay eh, baka naman mag-abuso yung delegate mo. Right? That's right. Even in the contract of agency under uh, uh, your civil code, if I'm not mistaken, Article 1568 of your civil code, diba? agency. So the agent is bound by all the powers that are given to him by the principal. Otherwise, he cannot do anything that is not within the power given to him under the contract of agency. Okay? And the principal may uh, dito, revoke all the acts of the agent if they are in excess of the powers given to him. So, to be sufficient, in that case of Bureau of Customs versus Tevez, the standard must specify the limits of the delegate's authority. Hanggang saan? Announce the legislative policy and identify the conditions under which it is to be implemented. So may roadmap ka hanggang saan lang. Masabi sa iyo, ilinisi mo yung buong bakulod, pati sila inilinis mo na. Ang layo niyan. <laughs> diba? Hmm. Ngayon, both tests must be present in that 1988 case of Eastern Shipping Lines versus POEA. But it is just a repetition of that uh, old case of uh, Pilaes versus Auditor General. If you remember that case? Uh, Anggal na yan eh. So both tests are intended to prevent a total transference of the legislative authority to the delegate who is not allowed to step into the shoes of the legislature and exercise a power essentially legislative. That is why the case of uh, dito, SEMA versus COMELEC, the act of ARMM Legislative Assembly was declared unconstitutional because it ex uh, exceeded the power delegated to it by Congress. Why? Ano ba ang nangyari dito? Ang nangyari kasi, yung ARMM Legislative uh, Assembly nag-create ng probinsya. And under our constitution, only Congress may create a province. Diba? <laughs> so we'll discuss that when we reach Article 6. Ha? At saka sa local government. So both tests must be there. The sufficient standards at saka yung completeness test. If not, there is a case of invalid delegation. So if the delegation is invalid, then the law is unconstitutional. Ganun as simple yun. So aside from delegation of power, there is also blending of power. Eh? Ay ba yung nakikita nyo? Blender yan. So blending of power is a situation when there, uh, there is a sharing of two or more departments in the performance of a given constitutional task. One department acts in a manner complementary or supplementary to another. Okay? Now, a mingling of powers among the three branches of the government. That is not a noble concept. Tagal na yan. As early as 1927 in the case of Government of the Philippine Islands versus Springer, this blending of power has become necessary to properly address the complexities brought about by a rapidly developing society. Rapidly developing, 1927 niya mga kapatid. Ngayon, 2021 na, almost 100 years na. So mas mabilis na dapat ngayon. But still, we are on that process of blending of powers, di ba? Now, Congress enacts the bill and the President approves it. Right? So that's a blending of power. The bill shall not become a law unless signed by the president. So executive and legislative are helping each other to create a law. Presumably for the welfare of the people. Now, the president prepares the budget and Congress enacts an appropriation, appropriation law pursuant to that budget. 
Kaya nga in the past na abuso ito dahil sila ang gumagawa, sila ang nag-a-approve ng budget, then naglalagay sila ng insertion. And it was known as the pork barrel. Ba't nga ba pork barrel? Kasi dati, pagka malakas ka sa namumuno sa American system, yung wala pa mga refrigerator yung mga barko. Eh, no? So yung mga barrel nilalagyan ng maraming pork. Kasi baon nila yan for a long time. Magbumag na navigate sila. Eh. Hindi pa high-tech ang navigation noon. Eh. So pag malakas ka doon sa supply officer, maraming pork barrel ibibigay sa iyo. <laughs> okay. So that becomes a source of corruption. Now, the president enters into a treaty. But, under the law, under the Constitution, the Senate ratifies the same with a vote of two-thirds of all its members. But, but, there's another twist to that. In the case of Pangilinan versus Cayetano, March uh, 16, 2021. Pangilinan versus Cayetano, March 16, 2021. When the president withdraws from a treaty, the same concurrence by the two-thirds vote of the Senate is not needed because there is no provision in the Constitution requiring the same. What the law does not include, it excludes. And according to Justice Leonin, the ponente again, akala ko ba walang ginagawa si Justice Leonin sabi nila, eh, ang dami-dami niyang ginawang desisyon eh. Diba? Lalo sa labor sa katerba ang desisyon na written by Justice Leonin. Well, Mga detractors, siyempre, sabihin, wala. But if you try to look into the records, the jurisprudence, ang daming kaso yung denisisyon na si Justice Leonin. Just like any other justice for that matter. Diba? Yeah, we can never say na tamad, walang ginawa. Uh, baseless yun. So you have to examine. Okay? And I think lahat naman niya may ginagawa. So, um, ang sabi ni Justice Leonin dito sa kay, uh, kay, kay, Pangilinan versus kay Tano, the president as the chief architect of foreign policy has the discretion to withdraw from a treaty without Senate concurrence. Kasi simple lang. Wala naman nalagay sa Constitution na kailangan niya ng concurrence. Eh. So ang issue kasi dito, we withdrew from our membership with the ICC. Okay? Napanyo? Nag-withdraw tayo. Ang problema... May mga nag-question dito before the court. Kasi nga, ang nakalagay sa Constitution, when we enter into a treaty, the President enters into a treaty, he needed the concurrence of the two-thirds vote of the Senate. Does he not need the same concurrence when he withdraws from a treaty? The answer is no. Pangilinan versus Kaita, no? Ito po ay March 16, 2021. March 16, for all we know, Ay ito yung naglanding si Magellan sa Limasawa, no? <laughs> so, ilan na? 500 years ago. Okay. Kaya kinanta ni Yoyo William. Maliwanan. Take note of that case, ha? You can read that para doon sa ating public international law portion. So, the Supreme Court may declare a treaty or international executive agreement or a law as unconstitutional. Assuming that the bill was signed by the president, so it becomes a law. But if its constitutionality is questioned before the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has the power to declare it to be unconstitutional if it is so. In the same manner, the president enters into a treaty, uh, Congress ratifies it by a vote of two-thirds, then it may be questioned before the Supreme Court, as in the case of Bayan versus Zamora where the constitutionality of the VFA was questioned. But according to the court, the treaty is constitutional. And then again, there was the case of Sagisag versus Ochoa, saying that the EDCA is supposed to be a supplement to the VFA, Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. Ano? It was not submitted to the concurrence of the Senate. So, former Senator Rene Sagisag, professor namin yan sa Constitu, dating senador, ano? So, went to the court questioning it. Kaya sabi niya, teka muna, treaty ito eh. So, it should be submitted to the concurrence of the Senate. But Pinoy did not submit that to the Senate for its concurrence. So, sabi ng Korte Suprema, hindi naman ito yung main treaty, it's only an executive agreement. So, it, need, uh, it does not need the concurrence of the Senate. 
So yan yung nakikita nating blending of powers ano. Then our go governmental structure rests on the principle of separation of powers. Under our constitution, uh, constitutional order, the legislative enacts the law, executive implements the law, and the judiciary construes the law. But in reality, the powers are not confined or delineated to each other. Therefore, there is blending. What? Maliwanag. So yan yung interplay of the different branches of the government. They have their own separate powers, yet somehow, nagbe-blend yan. Okay? In order, ano bang purpose nito? Eh, Siyempre, para sa bayan. Lahat naman yan para sa bayan. Lahat naman ang tumatakbo ngayon, di ba, para sa bayan. At nagdeklara na si Mayor Isko, kaya wala na. Si Pacquiao, nagdeklara na rin, may presidente. So, hindi na matutuloy yung gusto nating tambalan, ano, na Pacman at saka Yorme. So, hindi na matutuloy yung Pacquiao. Wala na. At si, si, Achen, si, ano, si Congressman Atchensa na ang Vice President ni Pacquiao. No? Ito namang si Yorme ay si Ong. So, Iskong naman sila. Isko at saka si Ong. Iskong. Okay. Ayan, puntahin natin yung inherent powers of the state. So, what are the inherent powers of the state? You are correct. Taxation, eminent domain, and police power. All of these inherent powers are for public purpose and the legislative in nature, but the similarities, well, just end there. No? Kasi may mga differences din yan. Eh. So, unahin natin yung <clears throat> police power. Police power, according, according to the case of Southern Drugstore versus DSWD, police power is not capable of exact definition. Tama? but has been purposely veiled in general terms to underscore its comprehensiveness to meet all exigencies. You think of all the things that may happen, police power can be used to address the situation. Kaya nga sinasabi ng Presidente, pwede ko kayong i-require na magpabakuna under police power. Yes, boss, but the problem is we do not have a law yet. I don't know if we already have a law requiring us to be vaccinated. Even if you do not want to. Diba? So police power may be used, but it must be based on law. Accordingly, it has been described as the most essential, insistent, and least limitable of all the powers, extending as it does to all the great public needs. Okay? That's why in that uh, old case of White Light uh, Corporation versus the City of Manila, Ito, nag-inak uh, ng ordinansa ang City of Manila na una-muna ipinasara yung mga uh, nightclub, mga bars, etc. Nang idiniklara itong unconstitutional in the case of City of Manila versus Lagyo, ang pinagtuunan man ng pansin yung mga, mga motels. No? Mga motels. Kasi I, I do not know if you are aware na nalaman ko lang ito lately, na dyan sa mga motel, pwede ka mag-check in ng mga around 3 hours lang. So, nagkaroon ng ordinance ang City Council ng Maynila, I think ang mayor pa noon, si Lito Achenza, na bawal yung mga short time rate as they call it. Kasi ang sweeping allegation is that itong short time rate na ito ay nagiging cause ng immorality, ng crime, ng drugs, etc. So pinagbawal. And for that reason, ni-require itong mga motel na pagka nag-check-in, dapat ang rate ay 24 hours, just like a hotel. So ano na ngayon ang kaibahan ng motel sa hotel? Diba? So kung 24 hours din lang pala, edi sa hotel ka na mag-check-in. Kasi ganun din eh. Ano bang kaibahan yan? Sabi ng estudyante ko, sir, yung home tahanan, yung house bahay, eh yung motel, Tirahan daw. Well, I, I do not know kung tama ba yun. Ha? Okay? So, it was declared to be unconstitutional. Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, police power, while incapable of exact definition, has been purposed. So, ganun din, di ba? Police power is based on the concept of necessity of the state. 
and its corresponding right to protect itself and its people. So police power may extend to everything conceivable. In one case, according to the court, it may regulate rights and liberty for the promotion of the common good. So covered ng police power yan. Kasama yung health, kasama yung well-being of the community, kaya pati yung regulation ng mga red light district, papasok ito. Pero yung i-regulate mo raw yung number of hours na mag-check-in sa motel, ay eh, that is beyond the scope of police power. Eh, totoo naman na may mga crimes na nangyayari. Eh, di lalong magkakaroon din ng crime pag hinabaan mo yung, yung requirement na pag-check-in, di ba? So, crimes may be committed uh, everywhere or anywhere regardless of how many number of hours they check in in a particular motel. So, it will be an additional burden to the people na nagtitipid. <laughs> Kasi, pag maiksi ang pagstay mo yata, alam ko, ma mas mura yan, ha? And I was told, I have no personal knowledge, eh, meron pa raw yan mga, ano bang tawag nila doon? Discount card? Is that true? Anyone here who can confirm or deny? I have no personal knowledge. <laughs> okay. So clean. So good. <laughs> okay. So, yan advertise So, who may exercise police power? In that same case of Southern Luzon Drug Corporation, uh, it is vested in the legislature by the Constitution. So, police power is exercised by Congress. That's why the president cannot say that I have police power. Because your police power, Mr. President, is based on law created by Congress. Nakuha natin? Oh. Well, the president is a lawyer. I know what he's talking about. So, it's very stressing that police power is lodged primarily in the legislature. It cannot be exercised by any group or body or individual not possessing legislative power. Therefore, the national legislature may delegate this power to the president and administrative boards as well as the lawmaking bodies of the municipal corporation or local government units. So yung police power ng president is delegated by Congress. So in the absence of a law authorizing the president to exercise police power, he cannot do that. You have to remember na iba yung power of the police sa police power. Ha? As law students, you should know, and I know you know, the distinctions between police power and power of the police. The president may have the police por uh, force under him through the DILG. But that is not necessarily police power. Okay? Now, Kaya namang ganyan ang polis mo, no? parang okay lang na maaresto ka. No? Okay, hindi akin yan, nagaling sa Google yan. Police power is plenary. In other words, Congress may enact any law covering any subject to promote health, morals, peace, education, good order or safety and general welfare of the people. Saan ang gagaling ito? In the Latin maxim, Salus populi es suprema lex. The welfare of the people is the supreme law. Okay? Now, what is the scope of police power? Well, almost unlimited. Diba? In case of Acevedo Optical, police power is essentially regulatory in nature. And the power to issue license or grant business permits if exercise for regulatory and not revenue-raising purpose is within the ambit of police power. Kasi pag revenue-raising, taxation yan. Hindi yan police power. Okay? So ma malawak ang police power. It may, as already mentioned, kasama dyan yung matters affecting the health, safety, peace, order, morals, comfort, and even convenience of the community. Okay? Now, what are the elements of police power? Police power has been defined as the st uh, state authority to enact legislation that may interfere with personal liberty or property in order to promote the general welfare. Yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, no? It may, regulate, it may regulate rights and liberty or even property for the common good or general welfare. So what are the two essential elements? Number one, imposition of restraint upon liberty or property. Kasi yung batas minsan, pagbabawalan ka, di ba? 
O tulad ng mga quarantine protocols, eh that is a restraint on your liberty. Okay? Yung uh, merong uh, dito sa Metro Manila, merong number coding. Uh, you cannot use your, pro, your your car during certain days, no? Dahil pa, para ma-issue yung traffic. So you cannot use your property. Your car is your property, right? But you cannot use it. Dahil lang doon sa regulation. Then, it is exercised for the benefit of the people or for the common good. That's why, nandun yung tinatawag nilang the law of overruling necessity. It is based on public necessity and the right of the state and the public to protection and self-preservation. Because in the absence of police power, who would regulate? And what would the basis of the regulation? Therefore, police power of the state, one court has said, is a power coextensive with self-protection and not in aptly term the law of overruling necessity. So self-preservation is the name of the game. Right? That's why the state exercises police power. By the way, they, these are inherent powers of the state. Meaning you, need, you do not need to have a law in order for the state to exercise this. However, sabi natin, these inherent powers are primarily lodged in the legislative department as the delegate of the people, not to the executive. Kasi sa executive, sino lang bang ang uh, elected sa executive? The president and the vice president. Whereas all the members of the legislative department are elected either through, yung sa Congress, di ba? either through district representation or party list representation. But all of them are elected. Kasi nato, all of them are elected. None of them is appointed. Okay? So what are the requisites for the valid exercise of police power? Sabi dun sa City of Manila versus Lagio, ito yung pinapasarado yung mga mga nightclub, mga massage clinic, hindi eh, ko alam kung nagpapagamot ba sa massage clinic kasi clinic yan eh, di ba? Sabi ng Korte Suprema, the concurrence of these two requisites are needed otherwise the police measure shall be struck down as an arbitrary intrusion into the private rights, a violation of due process clause. So ano ba yun? Number one, dapat meron kang lawful subject. So dapat present to itong dalawang ito. Ha? So what is lawful subject? Not only must it appear that the interests of the public generally as distinguished from those of a particular class require an interference with private rights. So lawful subject para saan? For the welfare of the people. And you have a lawful subject, it must be coupled with lawful means. The means adapted must be reasonably necessary for the accomplishment of the purpose and not unduly oppressive upon individuals. In the case of City of Manila versus Lagio, what was the goal of uh, ordering the closure of nightclubs, mga massage clinic na ito, yung mga bar, to promote the morals daw of the people of the City of Manila? But the law, the means employed was unlawful. Bakit? Despite a valid business permit, they were revoked for no reason at all. Wala namang violation itong mga club owners na ito uh, in the conduct of their business, yet there was an ordinance that required them to be closed even if there was a valid permit. Sabi ng Korte Suprema, the law, the means employed was unlawful. Maaring yung subject ay maganda kasi moral siya, eh, covered ng police power yan. Eh. But remember, the end does not justify the means. We are in a democracy. Okay? Now, what about the police power of local governmental units? The local government units exercise police power through the respective legislative bodies. So si mayor, si governor, wala rin siyang sariling police power because the delegated police power is through the sanggunian. Okay? The legislative body of the local government units. Now, 
what are the tests of a valid ordinance? Okay? Kasi yung police power by the local government unit is expressed through enactment of a valid ordinance. So what are the tests? Number one, it must not contravene the constitution or any statute. It must be constitutional. It must not be against the law. It must not be unfair or oppressive. Why? If it is unfair, it is a violation of equal protection. If it is oppressive, then it may be violative of the rights of the people. That's the case of Ligaspi versus City of Cebu. But it was taken from an old case, the case of Municipality of Birak. Huh? Okay? Must not be partial or discriminatory. Well, discrimination is prohibited. Must not prohibit, but may regulate trade. When the city council ordered the closure of bars and similar establishments, it was not regulatory. It was uh, prohibitive. It was prohibiting the exercise of their trade or business. And sabi dyan, may regulate but must not prohibit trade. And must be general and consistent with public policy. So you do not single out a particular uh, business. And must not be unreasonable. Okay? Again, uh, ito ay nanggaling dito sa old case of Tatel versus Municipality of Birak. Birak is Katanduanes. Kapit alam ko Katanduanes, no? Kala ko dati yan ay sa Aklan kasi di ba meron sila doon yung festival, yung Hala Birak. <laughs> di ba pala yun? Atiatihaw pala yun. So, sa Katanduanes. Kasi kapit alam ko Katanduanes. Okay, so pareho lang. 1992 and the other one ay more recent. Ano? Now, ang tanong, the MMDA, ito ba ay may police power? You know, MMDA, di ba? If you go to Manila, you have the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority created by Republic Act 7924. Sino ang principal author? Opo, tumatakbong vice president ngayon, Tito Soto. Siya ang author nito. Kasi dati, panahon ni Marcos MMC yan, eh, Metro Manila Commission. So when Cory Aquino arrived, nagkaroon tayo ng kongreso, itinuloy yung sistema that uh, the National Capital Region is a region that is a peculiar kind of region. The only region in the country which has no province on it. It is composed of uh, 16 cities, right now 16 cities, and one municipality that is Pateros. Okay? So napakaliit na portion ng lupa ng Pilipinas na tayo na Metro Manila. I may tell you the story prior to the creation of Metro Manila Commission by Marcos, Majority of this were parts of Rizal Province. Kaya nung San Juan Rizal, Caloocan Rizal, Pasay Rizal, Montinlupa Rizal. So napakalaki ng probinsya ng Rizal. Nung panahon ng Kastila, ang tawad dyan ay Morong. Okay? Nung tumating ang mga Amerikano, nag-create ng probinsya, tinawag na Rizal Province. So independent ang Quezon City at Manila. Kasi Manila was established by the Spaniards by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi pa noong 1574 ano from Cebu diretso dito sa uh, Manila sa Luzon na create yung Manila at pinasuko itong sina Sulaiman at sila Kandula Then Quezon City was created in 1939 by President Quezon So independent yung Quezon City at Manila The rest Rizal at saka yung Valenzuela used to be part of Bulacan Polo ang tawag yang Polo Bulacan Diyan pinanganak si Pio Valenzuela and Pio Valenzuela um, sino ba ito? Siya yung doktor na inutusan ni Bonifacio to convince Rizal to head the Katipunan which Rizal turned down. Okay? So kaya later on pinangalan sa kanyang Valenzuela. So yun ang komposisyon ng Metro Manila. So uh, there is no province so peculiar siya. Each city and one municipality They are independent kasi meron silang sarili-sariling mga uh, chief executives. Eh. So in order to coordinate their efforts, particularly yung mga social welfare uh, services, traffic, Metro Manila Development Authority was created. So MMDA under the law, which is Republic Act 
is a body composed of several local government units. And however, there is no single syllable and in Republic Act 7924 that grants MMDA police power, let alone legislative power. Kaya ang Metro Manila, hindi pwedeng gumawa ng MMDA cannot issue an ordinance on its own. Kasi nga, coordinating body lang siya. So sino ang gumagawa ng ordinansa? Yung iba't ibang mga local government units in Metro Manila and then pinag-uusapan para um, in harmony sila, ha? synchronized, pinag-uusapan ng Metro Manila Council composed of the 16 mayors. Okay? At uh, yung chairman ay ina-appoint ng presidente based on this law. But MMDA alone cannot promulgate policies. It must be delegated by the city, uh, by, by the Metro Manila Council. Ang issue kasi dito, kinuha yung plate number ng isang abogado. MMDA versus Garin, ano? So, nakaparada sa isang um, no parking area. Ang pagkakaalam po, may, may reserves be right, no parking. So, nagparada siya, tinanggal yung plaka. O, hindi eh, nagalit itong si attorney kasi eh, hindi, ba't makukunin? Hindi naman ikaw ang nag-issue niya. Sabi niya, MMDA kami. Ah, doon na question. Meron ba kayong police power to enforce that? To confiscate my license plate? Despite the fact na hindi kayo ang nag-issue niyan. LTO ang nag-issue niyan. So doon lumabas ng MMDA, walang police power. So delegated, eh, well, it has no delegated police power. So paano niya ito nagagawa? Through the ordinance crafted by the different cities in Metro Manila and being synchronized or harmonized by the Metro Manila Council of Mayors. Okay? So that's police power for you, ladies and gentlemen. And we move on to another power, the power of eminent domain. Constitutional basis, Section 9, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution, which says that private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. Okay? Now, eminent domain is also referred to as expropriation or condemnation. So in the case of Napocor versus Posada, sabi ng Korte Suprema, through Justice Leonin, the power of eminent domain is an inherent competence of the state. It is essential to a sovereign. It's inherent. So if you are a sovereign, you have eminent domain power. The Constitution does not explicitly define this power. But it subje but subjects it to a limitation. The limitation is found in the provision which you have just read. It did not define what is eminent domain, di ba? Pero ang sabi lang, yung limitation that Private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. If you try to analyze that provision, that covers everything there is in eminent domain. That there's a private property, it is taken by the government for public use, but the owner of the private property must be paid just compensation. So, completo na, di ba? Whether the use is public or whether the compensation is constitutionally just, will be determined finally by the courts. It is the court who will determine that. Now, however, the manner of its exercise, which is such government instrumentality, can be delegated with the police uh, power to condemn under what conditions and how may be limited by law. And one example is Republic Act 8974. But this law... Uh, it should be not be read as superseding the power of the court to promulgate rules and regulation. Thus, our existing rules should be read in conjunction. So, hindi siya conflicting but rather um, supplementing. Okay? And uh, in conjunction with the law that limits the conditions of the power of eminent domain. Okay? Sabi natin kanina, eminent domain is also called expropriation. So eminent domain, in that case of Manosca versus Court of Appeals, eminent domain also often referred to as expropriation. Less frequency, condemnation. Kasi nga, minsan, pag sa ordinary mamay, ang condemnation, teka muna, ha? 
Sabi ng mga Kastila, kondinado. <laughs> Iba na ang dating nun, di ba? It's like police power and taxation, an inherent power of sovereignty. Ha? It need not be clothed with any constitutional gear to exist. Hindi mo kailangan ng batas para ma-exercise ito. Ha? Instead, provisions of our constitution and the subject are meant to regulate rather than to grant the exercise of the power of eminent domain. So, the constitutional provision sets the parameters. Because it, the constitution recognizes that this inherent power is already there. Okay? So, the rules of court provide for the procedure for expropriation. So, under Rule 67 of the Rules of Court, there are two stages. That is also the decision in Chongson versus NHA. First, condemnation. And second, the ascertainment of just compensation. Take note of the stages for expropriation. Eh? Expropriation, according to the court, the procedure by which the government takes possession of private property is outlined in Rule 67 of the Rules of Court. And there are two phases na inulit lamang yung the binanggit kanina. No? Number one, determines the propriety of the action. And number two, the second phase determines the compensation to be paid to the landowner. Magkano? Right? That's why the first phase of expropriation commences with the filing of the complaint. Kasi hindi mo ma-expropriate if you do not file a complaint in court. Well, expropriation must be filed with the regional trial court. It ends with the order of the trial court to proceed with the expropriation and determination of just compensation. At sa isang decision, just compensation because it is not oppressive on both parties. Not oppressive on the buyer, which is the government, not oppressive on the seller, the private property owner. Right? Kaya nga, ang tawag, just compensation. The adjective is just, meaning makatarungan, hindi oppressive. So, during the pendency of the complaint before the trial court, the state may already enter and uh, possess the property subject to the guidelines in Rule 67 of the Rules of Court. Ano ba ang nakalagay doon? Na kapag ka ipinail mo na yung kaso, you just have to deposit to the court at least 10% of the assessed value of the property and you may now request the court to issue a writ of possession. And once the writ of possession is issued, then the expropriator may now enter the private property, condemn the private property, and convert it into public use. Right? However, that was modified under 89.74, as what we have seen earlier. So Rule 67 of the Rules of Court eh, is not the only set of rules. So kasi nakalagay doon, ito yung issue doon sa uh, Republic versus King Goyon, eh. yung naiya Terminal 3. We'll discuss that later on. Eh? So ganito, on November 7, 2000, Congress enacted 89.74. Para sa ba ito? It governs the expropriation of private property for national government infrastructure project. So ito ay very significant lalo ngayon dahil dun sa build, build, build project. Diba? Maraming mga naipatay infrastructure. Well, definitely mag expropriate ka dyan. Kasi dadaanan mo yung mga, like for example, building eh, the connector of uh, expressway. Yung skyway from north to south. South to North. Mabilis na ang biyahe ngayon. So, dadaan siya dun sa mga private property. If you were the private property owner, papayag ka ba? Nakunin na lang ng ganun-ganun yun. Okay? The law qualifies the manner by which the government may enter and take possession of the property to be expropriated. Under 8974, hindi 10% of the assessed value kundi 100% of the assessed value must be deposited and the court must immediately issue a writ of possession. So yun yung modification doon sa nakalagay sa Rule 67. Kasi sa Rule 67, 10% lang okay na. Yun ang ini-insist 
noong uh, uh, expropriator nung Naiya Terminal 3 ano. Ngayon, ito 'yan. National Government Projects governed by Republic Act 8974 yan till now itong ginagamit ano. So under Section 4 of that uh, Republic Act 8974 for National Government Project this is the Skyway that I was referring to you no sa Metro Manila grabe ang traffic dito eh. Alam ko nagpupunta naman kayo dito eh at uh, isusumpa mo ang traffic dito. Upon the filing of the complaint and after due notice to the defendant, the implementing agency, the expropriator, shall immediately pay the owner of the property equivalent to the sum of 100% of the value of the property based on the current uh, relevant zonal valuation of the BIR and the value of the improvement or structures as determined under Section 7. So 100% at hindi lamang 10% as required by Rule 67. So, kaya yun ang nangyari, in gusto i-expropriate ng gobyerno yung naiya Terminal 3. Ha? Kasi ganito ang nangyari dyan. If you uh, follow this case, in 2003 and 2004, there were two cases decided by the court. Questioning uh, the validity of the contract entered into by the Department of Transportation and Communication at the time and PIATCO, yung Philippine Air Transport Terminals Inco, International Transport Terminals Incorporated. Okay? So PIATCO, yun yung nagtayo ng NAIA Terminal 3. Ang problema, ito palang PIATCO ay hindi financially viable. So wala siyang financial capacity to enter into such contract. Hindi niya kayang i-deliver. But just the same, inaprubahan yung kontrata. So what else is new? <laughs> na walang financial capacity, pero nakakuha na napakalaking kontrata sa gobyerno. O, oh, nagtaka pa kayo. <laughs> so tinayo ng piyat ko. Ang problema, nag-progress yung kaso. And then when the decision was rendered by the court in 2003 and then in 2004, inaffirm dun sa, sa motion for reconsideration, um, Agan versus Piatko, Ademostenes Agan versus Piatko. Sabi ng Korte Suprema, ay eh, illegal yan yung kontrata nyo kasi wala pala financial capacity. Even assuming nanalo siya doon sa bidding, pero doon sa pre-bid qualification, hindi na dapat siya nag-qualify as a bidder. Pero bakit sa kanya pa rin na-award? Therefore, ininalify yung kontrata. Ay ang problema na itayo na almost 80% complete na yun na iya Terminal 3. But the court did not say what to do. With na iya Terminal 3. Ang gagawin natin dyan? O di, ito na ngayon. Pumasok na ngayon itong uh, DOTC para i-take over yung operation na na iya Terminal 3. Nagkaroon pa ng stand-off dyan. Ha? Way back 2004. Kasi yung mga gwardiya ng payat ko ayaw papasukin yung mga tao ng DOTC. At yung DOTC naman nagdala ng police kasi gusto nila i-take over. So a case was filed. And it was raffled to Judge Henry King Goyon. Nakikita niyo yung judge na yan sa Pasay, no? Now, after trial, Judge King Goyon ordered the payment of just compensation. Kasi ang gusto ng, ng DOTC, dahil illegal yung kontrata, void yung kontrata eh. So if it is a void contract, the theory was that they can enter the property using police power. So pag police power ang ginamit mo, hindi ka na magbabayad. Pero sabi ni Judge Gingo, yun hindi pwede. Kasi it is expropriation rather than use police power. Why? Ito ay, even assuming na void yung kontrata, ay meron kang property na itayo eh. Kung baga, builder in good faith sila. In essence, no? but without uh, mentioning that, builder in good faith yata. So before you can take over the property, you have to pay just compensation to the owners of the property. Okay, piyat ko. So, ang sabi naman ng DOTC, police power, titake over namin yan. Kasi nga, void yung contract eh. So, doon ang issue. Finally, ang sabi ni Judge Gingo yun, hindi. Hindi police power, kundi expropriation. And because it is a national government project, you cannot just pay or deposit 10% of the assess value or zonal value, whatever, but you have to pay according to 8479, huh? yung uh, 8974, sorry, 
8974, you have to pay 100% of the zonal value to the property owner. Ang sabi naman ng gobyerno, eh teka muna, the land with, in, within which it is built is owned by the government. The government cannot expropriate its own property. Kasi yung kinatatayuan ng NIA Terminal 3, airport yan, yung Villamor Airbase sa may-ari yan, eh, that's a government property. So, i-expropriate daw ba ng gobyerno ang sarili niyang lupa? Eh, ang sabi naman ng korte, which was affirmed by the Supreme Court, it's not expropriating your own property, but remember, the building is not yours. You're expropriating the building, not the land. <laughs> so, yan ang issue. So, kaya, uh, panalo ang piyat ko. So, nakarating ito sa Korte Suprema. On December 19, 2005, the Supreme Court affirmed the ruling of Judge Gingoyon and ordered na iya, yung, yung gobyerno, no? the OTC, to pay 3 billion pesos to Piatco before it could take over the operation of na Terminal 3 building. So, ibinalik kay Judge Gingoyon para computein niya at mag-issue ng writ of execution. And then ito na nangyari, hindi, na, hindi, hindi ko-wording siya na on December 31, 2005, ilang araw lang yan, after i-affirm niya yung, i-affirm ng Supreme Court yung decision niya, uh, the man was walking out of his house para daw mag-jogging, parang Saturday yan eh. Ah, December 31, so walang pasok. Nag-jogging siya in the morning, may dumaan na dalawang nakamotor, if I remember correctly, pinagbabaril itong judge na ito, patay. So hanggang ngayon, hindi alam kung sino nakapatay sa kanya. Kung anong dahilan. Ha? So that's the story. And the government is now uh, operating na IA Terminal 3 pero uh, nandun silang, I think, ang pagkakalam ko nasa arbitration sila. Hindi ko alam kung tapos na ba. Hindi. I have no idea. So, pero yan ang issue dyan sa expropriation. Ha? Now, the next question is who may exercise the power of eminent domain? In the case of Bilos of Burst Municipality of Panay, Panay sa Kapis, ano? eminent domain is a sovereign power, ha? state to appropriate private property, so it slides in the legislature, just like police power. But eminent domain can be delegated to the president, to the lawmaking bodies of the LGU, to public corporations, and quasi-public corporations. So take note, is specific kung sino ang pwede magkaroon ng delegated power of eminent domain or expropriation. In so far as the local government units are concerned, they have no delegated, uh, they have no inherent power of eminent domain. Local government units, units have no inherent power of eminent domain and can exercise it only when expressly authorized by the legislature, and as what already mentioned, there is Republic Act 7160 enacted by Congress that delegated the power to expropriate among the local government units under this law. Okay? So, ang tanong, who is a public corporation? A public corporation, in that case of uh, Pre Philippine Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Ito ang mga animals, ano merong ganyan society? Sana meron ding pan, uh, Philippine Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Your Lovers. <laughs> Walang ganun, buti pa yung mga animal, inaalagaan. Eh, no? <laughs> so may mga hilig sa animals, tapag ka meron kang pusa, isa lang, cut lang yan. Diba? Yung marami ang tawag, pangkat. Ayan. So yung isang dog, aso, yung marami, asosasyon. Ayan. So the criterion, therefore, to determine whether a corporation is public or private is found in the totality of the relation of the corporation to the state. Applying the above test, sino ang mga public corporations, provinces, chartered cities, and barangays? They are the best examples of public corporations. Created by law. Right? Now, what is a quasi-public corporation? Yung Latin na quasi-quasi. Iyan ay parang. Okay, para, parang nasa Marikina. Hindi. <laughs> Seems like. Okay? <laughs> parang looks like. 
Okay. So what is a quasi-public corporation? They are private corporations. Take note, huh? Basically, they are private corporations incorporated under the corporation law. However, they render public service, supply one, public ones, or pursue other eliminary objectives. Ito yung mga uh, for the general welfare. Ano? While purposely organized for the gain or benefit of the members. Kasi nga, private yan eh. Pero ba nagtayo ng korporasyon private corporation na ayaw kumita? Ha? They are required by law to discharge functions for the public benefit. At nakikita nyo yung mga example. Di ko na kailangan pampanggitin. Ano? So example daw, uh, utility, railroad, warehouse, telegraph, telephone. Meron ko ba nagte-telegraph ngayon? Telegraph na application, alam ko. Pero yung telegrama, parang wala na yan. And transportation companies. So yan, ang mga example ng quasi-public corporation. In other words, ang Meralco, ang PLDT, ang Napukor dati, can expropriate. Kasi meron siyang delegated power of eminent domain. Okay? Now, what about local government units? Local government units, as already said, but in the case of City of Manila versus Prieto, ito expropriation ng isang private property para gawing localized, uh, ano, socialized housing. Sabi ng Korte Suprema, well, wala talaga eh. Such power is essentially large in the legislature, although it may be validly delegated to local government units and other public entities and public utilities. Okay? So, ang tanong natin, what are the requisites so that an LGU may exercise the power of eminent domain. Number one, there must be an ordinance enacted by the local legislative council. It is exercised for public use and must pay just compensation. And if you are to expropriate a private property or a local government unit, the fourth requisite must be there. A valid and definite offer has been previously made to the owner. So dapat mag-offer ka. Pag tinanggihan yung offer mo, saka magpunta sa korte. Kasi alam nyo, kaya lang naman nakakarating sa korte. Why? Hindi pumapayag yung private property owner. Either na mo, nabababaan siya doon sa value offered by the buyer or merong sentimental value sa kanya kaya ayaw niya ibenta. Diba? Like ito yung kanyang uh, ancestral house. So dito pinanganak yung lolo ng lolo ng inaanak ng lolo ng kapatid ng inaanak kinakapatid ng kapitbahay nila. No? <laughs> so, ang layo na ng when. Kaya ayaw niya ibenta dahil may emotional attachment siya. Okay? So, these are the requirements for LGUs no, to exercise the power of eminent domain. Again, in that city of, uh, case of City of Manila versus Prieto, <clears throat> inulit lang ito that uh, there must be an ordinance enacted uh, by the local legislative council and the power of eminent domain is exercised for public use. So basically, that is the constitutional requirement. Now, payment of just compensation under Section 9 of Article 3 of the Constitution and other pertinent laws. Uh, also, consider uh, Rule 67 of the Rules of Court. And a valid and definite offer. Kasi pagka wala ka pang valid definite offer, you cannot file a case for expropriation uh, with the court. So, there must be an offer to the landowner kasi nga, baka malay mo, magkasundo, hindi ba? Now, um, there are limitations on the power of eminent domain by the local government units. Number one, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty. There is the constitutional uh, requirement ano, or prohibition because a private property owner, once the property is expropriated, is deprived of his private property. And the deprivation must be after just compensation. Otherwise, it will violate the constitutional right of the private property owner. That no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property. And another inherent requirement is due process of law. Before you are, dis uh, you are divested of your property, there must be due process. Okay? And the private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. That's uh, under the Constitution also. And that's the ruling of the court in the case of Lagkaw versus Labra. Now, 
what are the requisites for the exercise of the power of eminent domain? So number one, necessity. Is it really needed? Is it necessary to expropriate one's private property? Now, when it is exercised by the legislative body, meaning Congress, the question is necessarily a political question, meaning it is beyond the power of the court to intervene. Because what the court can uh, take into cognizance is a justiciable question. You know that, right? However, however, ladies and gentlemen, under the 1987 Constitution, if you can prove that such exercise by Congress is tainted with grave abuse of discretion, then you can always assign it by filing a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. You, you, you allege grave abuse of discretion. That's the so-called expanded power of judicial review. Because you have to remember that in ancient times, when I say ancient, before the 1987 constitution was enacted, when the issue is political, as they term it, political question, the court will not bother intervening. Why? The court would always say, political question is better left to the discretion of the people. Diba? Kasi anyway, sa next election, kung ayaw nila nung ginawa, palitan na lang nila, boto sila ng iba. So, yan ang issue dyan. But now, under the present constitution, even if it is uh, colored with political question as they say, the court may intervene if you invoke and probably you can prove that there is grave abuse of discretion. What is that? The whimsical, capricious, and oppressive exercise of a discretionary power. Diba? Then pag kumain ka dyan ng bagay sa bakulod, yung mga inasal, hindi na kailangan daw ng sauce yan. Kasi pag kayong chicken, nilagyan mo ng maraming gravy, ayan, gravy abuse yan. <laughs> Nabawa ng gravy. <laughs> yung grave abuse. No. However, when the power is exercised by the delegate, and that includes the local government unit, it is a justiciable question. So doon lang papasok ang korte. But then again, yun na nga, ang sabi natin, may limitation kahit yung exercise by Congress. So, it must involve a private property. Diba? Kasi no, pag hindi naman private property, yan, sabi nga ng gobyerno doon sa uh, Republic versus Gungoyon, the government cannot expropriate its own property. Kung property mo na yan, ba't ito pa-expropriate? Diba? Oh. Private property dapat ito. And the condemnation or expropriation must be for public use, not for private use. Kasi ang, ang bottom line mo is the welfare of the people. Eh, eh paano? Gusto lang pala expropriate ni Mayor kasi maganda yung site mo malapit sa beach. Diba? So gusto niya expropriate para mapunta sa kanya. Ay unreasonable naman yan. So it must be for public use. Now, in the case of Manapat versus Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court was saying over the years and in a plethora of cases, the court has recognized the following requisites for the valid exercise of the power of eminent domain. Number one, it must involve a private property. Okay? Private property taken by the government. And there must be genuine necessity to take the private property. Baka naman pinag-iinitan mo kasi political rival mo. Diba? That's why necessity must be determined. And taking must be for public use. Huh? Iba yata yun nasa picture, parang confiscation yan. <laughs> o hindi, hold up yan. You know? Ayan. There must be payment of just compensation and the taking must comply with the due process required by law. Okay? So those are the necessary requirements in that case of Manapat. Uh, it involves a property of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila. Huh? Now, what do we mean when we say taking? Uh, marami kasing kwan eh. Now, the expropriator must enter the private property. Kasi pa hindi mo naman pinasok yung private property, wala naman taking. Pinapanood mo lang. Parang trust mo siya. Pero pinapanood mo lang. Wala kang move na ginawa. Ay, mauunahan ka dyan. Kanganla, daig ng masipag ang tumatakbo ng matulin. <laughs> Mali yata. Huh? The entry must be for more than a momentary period. Although walang forever, kaya lang huwag naman masyadong sandali lang. 
Eh? The entry must be under a warrant or color of authority. Therefore, if you want to expropriate a private property, you must be possessing the power either uh, you are the Congress or you are a delegate by Congress. Meaning, there's a law delegating to you the power of eminent domain. The property must be devoted to public use and the use of the property must oust the owner uh, of, and deprive him of the beneficial enjoyment of the property. So totally, mapapaalis na siya dyan. That's the reason why you have to pay him just compensation. Okay? Now, under jurisprudence, the court was saying that there are two kinds of taking. One is called possessory taking. Uh, walang kinalaman yata yung picture sa taking na ito. No? <laughs> possessory taking, it occurs when the government confiscates physically and occupies the property. So, na-deprive ka ng possession of your private property. Eh? Like yung gagawin, very common dito yung gagawin kalsada. Eh. Gagawin kalsada, eh may bahay ka doon dadaanan, so kukunin yung, yung bahay mo. Aalisin niya. Now, the government sometimes do not, uh, does not take over private property, but imposes unreasonable regulations that in effect would deprive the owner of the economically beneficial use of his property, then it is called regulatory taking. In both instances, government must pay just compensation to the owner. Eh kung regulatory taking, okay yun sa akin. Bakit? Hindi ko kunin yung property mo eh. Kaya lang sa sobrang higpit na regulasyon, hindi ka na kumikita. Diba? So dapat bayaran ka. That's what happened when the City Council of Manila ordered the closure of the establishments despite the fact that they have valid permits. Okay? So regulatory taking in the guise of uh, promoting uh, morals among the people of the city of Manila. Okay? Now, yan yung two kinds of taking, hindi pa na itatanong sa bar yan. So, when you take the bar, most probably, oy, na-extend yung bar, baka pwede kayo humabol, ha? sa January na. <laughs> Ang gusto <yung> humabol. <laughs> okay. Na, hindi na raw tatanggap ng bagong application. Eh. So, yung mga nakapag-apply na, deadline September 15, then they are the only ones who will be taking the bar next year. But who knows? Ako naman, ayoko mangyari, pero baka pagsabayin na rin yung 2022 bar talaga. Kasi you cannot have two bar examinations in one year. That would be very special uh, situation na nagbar ka ng January to February, then magbabar ka ulit ng November. Diba? O baka January na ang bar palagi. Diba? So who knows? Basta, whatever it may be, whenever it will be, or as long as you are ready, there's no problem. But uh, is there anyone who is really ready to take the bar? <laughs> diba? Wala makakapagsabi na ready na siya for the bar eh. Now, puntahin natin yung public use. Public use, according to that case of Manosca versus Court of Appeals, has been broadened to include not only use directly available to the public, but also those which redound to their indirect benefit. Example, an ancestral house of a known personality will be converted to a museum. So, ang sabihin ng may-ari ng bahay, hindi naman public use yan eh. Diba? Pero, expanded yung concept ng public use kasi eventually, who would benefit from a museum? It's the public. Diba? Hindi ka tulad ng kalsada na talagang everyday ginagamit ng publiko. A museum, ilang tao lang makikinabang dyan, but still, it would redound to the benefit of the public. And that only a few would actually benefit from the expropriation of the property does not necessarily diminish the essence and character of the public use. What is involved in this case? The conversion of the house where Felix Manalo was born in Tagig. Felix Manalo, you know him, di ba? Baka meron sa inyong member of Iglesia ni Cristo. He's the founder of Iglesia ni Cristo. And the house where he was born will be converted to a museum. 
Kasi importante yung figure yan. Remember, he's considered as the Martin Luther of the Philippines. <laughs> Nagtayo ng sariling religion. Ha? Wait until I formally establish Saxony Duca. <laughs> Kaya handa ko na yung bahay ko na gagawin museum. Dada joke lang. <laughs> diba? So, ngayon, uh, yun bang socialized housing? Yan ba ay for public use? Definitely, according to the court. So kaya yung uh, property na i-convert, na uh, tinexpropriate ng gobyerno to be distributed to the homeless people of the city through, through the so-called socialized housing. At ito, pangako ni Manny Pacquiao, pag na siya naging presidente, ibabahay niya kayo. Ay, sorry. Uh, pababahay. Doon? Bibigyan niya kayo ng bahay. Ayan. Iba pala yung ibabahay. Di ba yung pangako niya? Ay, nangako lang eh. Gusto niya to pa rin pa. Grabe naman kayo. Nangako na eh. These are promising politicians. Ano? So, palagi nangangako. So, it need only be added that at this juncture, public use uh, requisite for the valid exercise of the police power or uh, eminent domain rather is flexible and evolving. So, at present, it may be may not be amiss to state that whatever is beneficially employed for the general welfare satisfies the requirement of public use. So, hindi lang kalsada, hindi lang kung ano, kundi pati yung socialized housing. Kasi normally, alam nyo, meron tayong tinatawag na urban poor uh, uh, office dito sa mga urban areas kasi ang problema natin yung mga informal settlers. So, they would occupy a privately owned land and then dadami sila dyan, ano? Parang kanyan eh, biglang dadami. Tapos when the owner would use the land, ayaw na nila umalis. So yung owner na ayaw na ng gulo, ibibenta sa gobyerno. Yung gobyerno, i-convert siya into socialized housing. Ngayon, ang problema kung ayaw ibenta nung may-ari ng property. Kasi, sabi ko nga sa inyo, baka gusto niya mas malaking value or he wants to maintain the property for sentimental value or for emotional attachment. Di ba? So, anong gagawin dyan? Dadaling sa korte yan. But in bringing the matter to the court, the burden of proof is on the expropriator. What does he need to prove? Huh? That the private property is for public purpose when you take it. If it fails in discharging this burden, the property must be returned to the owner. Subject to whatever damages were incurred. In the course of the taking. In the case of uh, NPC, National Power Corporation yan, versus Posada, may iti-take over na property doon sa Katanduanes kasi magtatayo ng kalan substation. When Napocor was still Napocor. No? And then, an uh, inofera na napakababang halaga, parang 500 per square meters. Per square meter. Ang gusto ng mga owners, 2,000 per square meter. So hindi magkasundo. Pinagpunta sa korte. Nag-appoint ng commissioner ang korte to determine how much is just compensation. And it was determined na 1,500 plus. So lower than what is being asked by the owners but definitely higher than what is being offered. So Napocor appealed it and then later on, we need draw yung appeal kasi napatunayan na may iba palang mas magandang gagamitin at mas mura. <laughs> so we need draw. Hindi dapat ibalik. Ang problema, ayaw magbayad ng damages. Eh siyempre, nadamage sa yung mga tao. Nagpunta na sa korte eh. Yun. So the burden of proof is on the expropriator. Okay? Ano lang naman ang papatunayan mo? Number one, necessity. Number two, ito ay for public use. Number three, the justness of the compensation. Now, there are private properties na did inexpropriate, ano? Like for example, public market. Uh, di Gagawin niyo public market o sige, public use yan. Problema, later on, isinarado yung market. Kasi puro online na yung mga tao. At may mga ayaw na magka-COVID ng tao, so ayaw magpunta sa merkado. So what do we do when that, with that property being expropriated? Now, once expropriated, the change of public use is of no moment. So kung dati siyang palengke, gagawin mo nga yung uh, slaughterhouse. Kung public pa rin, walang problema. But, you cannot convert it into private use. Why? Eh, it will circumvent the law. Diba? Kasi maabuso yan. 
So, an expropriator wanting to have a piece of your property, kasi gusto niya, maganda ito, i-develop niya, kunyari, gagawin niyang uh, public use, later on, i-abandon yung public use at ibebenta sa private developer, mas mataas na ang presyo. That would certainly be a circumvention of the rule and the law on expropriation of private property. Okay? Take note of the case of Republic versus Court of Appeals. Eh? Take note also of the date. Kasi maraming kasong Republic versus Court of Appeals. Arayang PAL versus NLRC, San Miguel versus NLRC. Ang daming ganyan eh. Diba? So kaya take note of uh, the date. Kung, kasi mahirap tandaan yung GR eh. Huwag nalalagyan ng O sa dulo. Ah, GRO. Iba yun, iba yun. GR number. Ah, GRN at hindi GRO. Ayan. So, ah, ngayon. What about just compensation? In that uh, case of Republic uh, versus uh, Islaban versus the Honorio, just compensation is qualified by the word just. To convey that equivalent must be real, substantial, full, and fair. Corresponding to the value of the property. Di ba? Uh, determined either as of the date of the taking of the property or filing of the complaint whichever came first. Kasi minsan ang gusto nila yung at the time of taking. Kasi yun daw nauna. No? Sabi naman nung, nung may-ari. Kasi alam nyo, pagka private uh, real property, it appreciates. Diba? Yung value appreciates. Unlike your personal property na nagde-depreciate yan. So, uh, just compensation can be agreed upon. Yan naman ang sabi ng Korte Suprema in that case of Republic versus Kigoyon. So if you could agree on just compensation, well and good. You need not disturb the court. But if you cannot agree, then you go to court. For the court to determine the just compensation in eminent domain. Because that is a judicial function. The executive department or the legislative may make the initial determination. But when a party claims a violation of the guarantee in the Bill of Rights that the property must be taken for public use upon payment of just compensation, then you go to court. And the ruling of the court must prevail. Much less the court be precluded from looking into the justness of the decreed compensation. Trabaho ng korte yung magdetermine whether or not the compensation is just. Okay? So, in determining just compensation, uh, what should be the court looking for? It should look for fair market value. And what is fair market value? The price that may be agreed by the parties who are willing but not compelled to enter into the contract of sale. So take note of the term fair market value. The price that the buyer is willing to buy without compulsion, the seller is willing to sell without compulsion. So voluntary. If they could agree on the price, on the fair market value, do not disturb the court anymore. Tapos na eh, right? Just like any other case, if the parties could agree, it's all right. Sabi dun sa civil code, by entering into reciprocal concessions, parties prevent a litigation or put an end to what already commenced. So, compromise. Diba? For the purpose of appraisal, the fair market value of the property is taken into account. And such value refers to the highest price in terms of money which a property will bring if exposed for sale in the market. Kasi, I mean, alam nyo, in reality, when the government or any other allowed expropriator would assess the value of your property, talaga namang mababay. Hindi namang papalugi yung expropriator na yan, di ba? Yun namang seller, natural, hindi rin magpapalugi yan. Kasi magtatanong-tanong din niya kung magkano yung value ng property niya. Huwag dun sa assess value kasi mura talaga yung purposes of taxation. But you look into the current fair market value. Oh, pag binenta ko ba ito, inopen ko sa market, how much would I get out of this property? Okay? But remember, sabi ng korte, consequential damages minus consequential benefits. Diba? In addition to the market value, portion uh, taken is also entitled to recover consequential damages, if any, to the remaining part of the property. 
Hinaanan ng yung bahay mo, no? And expropriate, kalahati lang. Eh, pa, paano naman yun? Papakinabangan mo pa ba yung kalahating bahay lang? Sabi ng gobyerno, kalahati lang babayaran ko kasi yung kalahati ng bahay mo, nakatayo pa naman eh. But can it be devoted to the purpose it was intended? I don't think so. Diba? Hati na yung kama mo eh. So, eh di, pabayaran mo na yung buo. But, if there are consequential benefits, that must be deducted from the purchase price. To be fair naman to the government or to the expropriator. Diba? The same time, from the total compensation, must be deducted the value of the consequential benefits. Nang inexpropriate yung property mo, nagtayo ng magandang kalsada, eh may property ka pa palang iba malapit dun, nag-appraise yung value. Kasi nagkaroon ng access road eh. O, oh, edi ima-minus natin yon. To be fair to the expropriator. No nagtayo ng ang napukor ng, uh, ng substation, nagkaroon ng kuryente yung lugar. So, hindi na mahirapan yung mga tao na magpakabit ng kuryente. Hindi tataas yung valuation ng property mo. Yun. Now, uh, the value of the land is determined at the time of the filing of the complaint. That's the Repub uh, case of Republic versus Kera, no? So, under Rule 67 of the Rules of Court, the just compensation is to be determined at the date of the taking or filing of the complaint, whichever comes first. Kasi kung nagkasundo na kayo, edi kukunin niya na yan. Eh, kung di kayo magkasundo, filing of the complaint, whichever comes first. Okay? But also, we need due process. That is a constitutional mandate. Diba? Yan ang sabi niya sa kasong Lagkaw versus Labra, unahin natin yung Article 3, Section 1. That no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So the court cannot even adopt a hands-off policy simply because public use or public purpose is invoked by the ordinance. So kahit pasabihin for public use yan, the court will look into the justness of the compensation among others kasi po pwede rin tingnan yung necessity. Right? Now, that uh, those are the things that you need to remember in uh, power of eminent domain. There is another power inherent upon the state and that's what we call the power of taxation. So the power of taxation is the power to levy taxes uh, to be used for public purpose. So lahat naman ito for public purpose, di ba? Now, the main purpose of taxation is revenue generation. Power of taxation, on the other hand, is circumscribed by inherent constitutional limitations. There are inherent limitations in the constitution as to this power. Eh? Although... We will just uh, discuss the general provisions on taxation because you have another subject, taxation law, di ba? Pero kayong tax law review. So you'll be discussing taxation in details. So we'll just be looking into the general concepts of taxation as an inherent power of the state. Okay? Now, so, uh, according to the court, in the case of Mactan Cebu uh, versus Marcos, Judge Marcos yan ang Cebu, Verily, taxation is destructive power which interferes with the personal and property rights of the people and takes from them a portion of their property to support the government. Diba? Kasi, meron ba tao gusto magbayad ng tax pagka-voluntary? I don't think so. <laughs> Kaya na, taxation and tax is enforced contribution. Taxation is the inherent power. So, either money or property. Diba? Therefore, Tax statutes must be construed in strictissimi juris against the taxpayer and liberally in favor of the taxing authority. Right? Strictly against the taxpayer claiming exemption. May sabi niya, exempted ako. Patunayan po na ikaw exempted from paying taxes. But insofar as the state is concerned, for as long as income is generated, the state will levy taxes. Right? Alam niyo na yung konsepto ng income uh, eh, ano, um, Filipino citizens earning income from within and from without. Resident aliens earning income from within. <laughs> so who may exercise the power of taxation? Just like the police power and the power of eminent domain, it can be, it is exercised generally by the legislature. But just like the two powers we mentioned, taxation power may also be delegated. 
right? Kanino pwedeng i-delegate? Lawmaking bodies of the LGU, just like the power of eminent domain. The president under Article 6, Section 28, also under Section 23 of Article 6. Okay? Now, at the outset, sabi ng Korte Suprema, in that case of Batangas versus Filipina Shell, it must be emphasized that although the power of tax is inherent upon the state, the same is not true for the LGU. So just like the two other powers, diba, kailangan i-delegate pa ito ng Kongreso. But just like the other two powers, inherent powers, i-delegated na yan through the local government code. So kaya nga, alam nyo, pagka binasa nitong ating mga local executives, ang local government code, hindi na sila magde-desire pa ng federalismo eh. Kasi the LGC or the local government code has given them adequate powers. If they will just exercise these powers uh, to the letter and correctly, they do not need extra power anymore to generate whatever uh, taxes they need. Nandun eh. Kaya lang ang problema dito ng mga LGU kasi, dependent siya doon sa ERA. Internal Revenue Alertment. Kasi balikta din. No? In uh, federal states, katulad sa Amerika, uh, the local government units are the ones generating their own income through taxation. Sa atin hindi, centralized eh. So pag federal ka, yung local government ang mag-generate ng tax, mag-contribute ka lang sa national government. Sa atin baliktad, is the national government that imposes taxes except yung mga nakalagay sa LGC, ano, sa local government code. And then, pag nakolekta lahat, saka lang bibigyan ng share niya ang local government. Kaya nag-aaway-aaway sa era na yan. Right? Ayan. So, in recent years, however, the increasing social challenges of the uh, times expanded the scope of state activity and taxation has become a tool to realize social justice. And the equitable distribution of wealth, economic progress, and protection of local industries as well as the welfare and similar objectives. Public welfare. Uh, example nito, no? Um, certain sin, uh, sin products, yung alak, uh, sigarilyo, di ba may sin taxes na kinukolekta. Under Republic Act 11.228, yung mga PWD na walang trabaho, they are automatically covered by fail health. I mean, sorry, fail health. <laughs> Hindi pala fail health. Fail health. Ano? Ayan. So saan man gagaling yung contribution nila? If the PWD is working, mag-cover talaga siya kasi may trabaho siya eh. Iko-contribute siya at saka employer niya. Eh paano kung unemployed yung PWD? Covered siya under the law. The same law says na yung coverage niya would come from the collected sin taxes. Diba? So, a tool of social justice. Bakit? Kukunan mo yung mga maraming bisyo kasi mahal ang bisyo nila eh. Yung nakolekta, ibibigay dun sa mga less fortunate na walang coverage ng PhilHealth. So, through taxation to realize social justice. Now, sabi ni Chief Justice John Marshall, the power to tax involves the power to destroy. <laughs> Ayaw natin yan, di ba? But that is the main decision eh. Pero ang hirap kasing i-quote niyan eh. That the power of taxing by the state may be exercised so as to destroy it. It's too obvious to be denied. To carry it to the excess of destruction would be an abuse. To presume which would banish the confidence which is essential to all government. At yun lang ang tinandaan natin. The power to tax includes the power to destroy. Kaya ayaw nilang ikinu-quote yan eh. But the government loves to quote that. Yung taxpayer, ito ang kinu-quote. And remember, that is just a dissenting opinion. <laughs> the power to tax is not the power to destroy. Huh? The power to tax is not the power to destroy while this court sits. Ang sarap nga namang pakinggan. The power to fix rates is the power to destroy if unlimited but this court while it endeavors to prevent confiscation does not prevent the fixing of rates. But remember, it is a dissenting opinion of Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. And what is the rule? You do not quote from a dissenting opinion. You quote from the majority decision. Kaya lang, mas masarap pakinggan ito if you are the taxpayer. Right? 
So how can they be harmonized? No need to harmonize. Kaya lang, if need be, if the taxing uh, power has a law backing him up, okay, and he is exercising the power of taxation within the, the parameters provided by the law, that includes the power to destroy. Kasi pag hindi ka nagbayad, kukunin yung property mo, di ba? Pero, kung yan naman ay oppressive, ha? Eh, well, it will not involve the power to destroy. Yan lang kasimple. Now, uh, what are the inherent uh, limitations on the power to tax? Number one, it must be for public purpose, just like any other power of the state. It cannot be delegated because it is already delegated to Congress. Territoriality or the situs of taxation. And government uh, is exempt from taxation. Kasi siya rin naman nangungulik tayo, di ba? and international committee or reciprocity. Kaya nga, inahabol ni Presidente yung uh, tax down na hindi binayaran ni Manny Pacquiao. Eh. So ba't hindi ito pinuruso ng BIR? I think na if, I, if my memory serves me right, it's international committee. Bakit? Kasi uh, meron tayong mga tax treaty with the US, di ba? Na pwedeng i-credit yung tax na i-charge doon sa taxation dito because you are taxing the same person. Eh. So, kawawa naman si Pacquiao, kung nag-tax na siya doon, walang credit yung tax dito. I think uh, dapat tingnan yan. Kasi kung totoo sinasabi ni Presidente, eh, malaki ang utang ni Manny Pacquiao. But if I, my memory serves me right, dyan nadaan niya sa International Committee. Dahil nagbayad na siya doon. Eh. So, pwede niyang ipatax credit dito yon because of a treaty. Eh? Now, Definitely, it must be for public purpose. Public purpose is the heart of a tax law. You cannot impose tax law for a private purpose. Diba? Public purpose naman na magaganda yung mga sasakyan ng ating mga government officials na galing sa taxes natin. Na nag sila ng marami mga contractual employees na pag tinanong ng committee on budget sa kongreso, hindi may paliwanag kung sino itong mga hinire nila. Ay, wala akong sinabi ko ng department yan. Ha? Narinig ko lang yan. Hindi <laughs> sinasabi yung PCOO yan. Ha? <laughs> yan ang sinasabi doon sa budget hearing. Eh. O, asan itong mga contractual employees ito? Ba't ang dami nito? Laki-laki ng budget yun sa contractual. Yan. While the categories of what may constitute a public purpose are continually expanding in the light of the expansion of government function, the inherent requirement that taxes can only be exacted for a public purpose, still stands. You cannot tax the public for a private purpose. And there must be due process. Diba? The case of Pepsi Cola versus Municipality of Tanawan Leite, due process is usually violated where the tax imposed is for a private as distinguished from a public purpose. The tax is imposed on property outside the state. That means to say extraterritorial taxation, and that's not allowed. And arbitrary or oppressive methods are used in assessing and collecting taxes. Therefore, you have to strictly follow, if you are the taxing authority, you must follow the parameters within the law. You cannot do something beyond what the law provides. Now, what about the case of double taxation? When does double taxation occur? It happens when the additional taxes are laid on the same subject by the same taxing jurisdiction during the same taxing period and for the same purpose. Okay? So, yan ang mga elements of double taxation. Hindi naman nagbabago ang ruling dyan ng Korte Suprema. Now, double taxation, however, is not forbidden. Okay? In general, it is not forbidden by our fundamental law. But double taxation becomes obnoxious when where the taxpayer is taxed twice for the benefit of the same governmental entity or by the same jurisdiction for the same purpose but not in the case where one tax is imposed by the state and the other by the city or municipality. Kasi magkaibang taxing authority. Diba? Kaya yung mga syntaxes 
they inimpose ng national government. Pagdating sa local government, they may also impose their own taxes. Okay? Not why? Kasi pag natuyo ang taxes, wala na. Ubos ang lifeblood. <laughs> diba? Taxes are the lifeblood of the government and so should the collected uh, should be collected without unnecessary hindrance. Kasi kung wala kang tax, ano na yung budget natin? Uutang na lang ba tayo lagi? Eh, isang katerba na utang natin. Even the president is saying, bauna tayo sa utang. Teka muna, ang dami nating budget dun sa ano ah, bayanihan 1 and 2, bakit tayo nabuon sa utang? Eh, puro naman donated yung mga vaccine natin ah. Hindi, bumili tayo sa China. <laughs> okay. Pero ayaw nilang i-reveal kung magkano talaga yung Sinovac, ha? Hindi <laughs> ko lang alam ba't ayaw nila i-reveal. Now, on the other hand, such collection should be made in accordance with law as any arbitrariness will negate the very reason for the government itself. Okay? It is therefore necessary to reconcile the apparently conflicting interests of the authorities and the taxpayers so that the real purpose of taxation, which is the promotion of the common good, may be achieved. In the absence of taxes, ay matutuyuan ng budget ang gobyerno. Okay? Kaya nga, that's the reason why uh, we have that principle of construing tax law strictly against the taxpayer and liberally against the government. Diba? Strictissime juris. So meaning, strictly construed against the taxpayer and liberally against the government or in favor of the government. I've been talking for almost three hours now. Wala pa kayong tanong? You have questions. You may ask your questions. Huh? <laughs> so that I would know that you are still there. <laughs> okay. So, what about police power and taxation? Kasi yung, yung eminent domain ang dali, eh, di ba? You take over private property for public use, you compensate. But what about, sometimes, nag, nag, uh, nagko-combine yung taxation at saka police power. Eh. So, where do you distinguish? Police power is the power of the state to enact legislation that may interfere with personal liberty or property in order to promote uh, general welfare. While taxation is the power to levy taxes to be used for public purpose. And the main purpose of police power is regulation of a behavior or conduct. While taxation is to generate revenue. So doon nagkaiba. Re-regulate. Para may orderly uh, peace and order. But for taxation, gustong kumita ng gobyerno. So that, that, that those are the distinctions between police power and taxation. Okay? 